Hey guys, it's me, Bones McGee, and today I figured I'd share my takes on a few ship stereotypes and explain them. Before I begin, I'd like to preface this video by saying that I know Soundsmith already did these for Team Fortress 2, and Backsaber also already did this for this game. But as we've learned with the Fine Brothers, you can't copyright a video format, and I have my own experiences with these ship sets that may differ from other people. Also, if you don't apply to any of these stereotypes, that's completely okay. This game is about cosmetic progression, and what you like is what you like. Anyway, let's get into it. Ah, old reliable. The default ship set is difficult to pin down to a specific type of player because of the sheer range of people that use it. You've got swabbies fresh off the maiden voyage, experienced players who use it as a bluff to trick people into thinking they're new, sea hobos, you name it, there's probably some subsection of the player base that swears by this set. Usually, the cannons are the most used piece because they're simple and non-distracting, and don't necessarily look bad with other sets, since the parts of the sailor set will match the hull color of whatever hull you're using. Overall, the item descriptions for this set are superbly accurate, completely average and unassuming. Back before the DA sails got nerfed, they often got paired with this set, which in all honesty was but ugly. You know the only reason you paid 8 mil for those seals was for the stupid triangle cut, because you don't have the rest of the set. Why? Because it's so damn expensive. Ironically enough, I hardly see crab lords using this, probably because the ship set is considerably more expensive than the clothing set, and some parts require commendations. Therefore, usually the people that use this just generally enjoy the set, which there's nothing wrong with that. If a crab lord does use this, it's because they have a more experienced friend who helped them grind for the money. The Lord of the Ocean Crawler set, not many Kraken lords I encounter actually use this. Once again, probably because it's too expensive and it requires commendations. From my experience, these guys are a little more aggressive than their Ocean Crawler cousins, but don't really compare to their bigger, edgier brother. Oh boy, do not get me started. But I'm gonna anyway because that's what this video is about. This is Baby's first tryhard set. Some might think of the Ash and Dragon set, but personally I think of this set when I think of wannabe sweat lords. These guys are aggressive and will chase you, especially when they have the full set equipped, but if you're average at PvP, these guys usually won't be a challenge, since if you hit them hard enough and fast enough, they usually chicken out. The amount of times I've had one of these guys run up on me and I laid into them only for them to run after four holes is ridiculous. Overall, Inky Krakens are wannabe tryhards who think they're hot shit. The other baby's first tryhard set, but not always. If they have the hull, they're new and they're a tall tailor, but if they're wearing the full set, they're wannabe tryhards. Just like the Inky Kraken, these guys are aggressive by nature, not the best at PvP, usually running after a certain amount of damage to their ship. But I've encountered a small handful of people back during my journey to Skeleton Curse that legitimately handed my ass while using this set, so don't underestimate them. Most aren't the best, but some are pretty damn good. It's also one of the most easily obtained cool sets in the game, which I find funny that being a glow stick means you're cool. I blame Fortnite for this. Jesus Christ, the Duke, better known as the Xbox set. This set is a total anomaly to me. It's almost always a super galleon, never a brigantine. They're always naturally aggressive, and they aren't good at any form of PvP, be it naval or hand-to-hand. -hand. And they always only have one mermaid gem, usually a green one ironically enough, or a low-level bounty skull. If they're flying emissary, it's always gold hoarder, but no level bigger than one because they lack any treasure other than the mermaid gem. The only time this doesn't apply if the ship somehow is a brigantine, in which they are using the stereotype as a bluff to trick people, like with the sailor set. However, I've only encountered two of these brigantines. If I had a nickel for every Xbox brigantine that I've sunk to, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird considering that it happened twice. Ah, the Ancestral set. One of my personal favorites because of the emotional attachment I have to the game it's based on. Unfortunately, every ship I've encountered flying the colors of Ori are just Twitch drop hunters, and haven't actually played any of the Ori games. In fact, when the first four parts of the set were announced for Twitch drops in a YouTube community post last October, someone legitimately thought this was a Lilo and Stitch crossover set or something. 
It doesn't entirely blow my mind. It's been a small joke in the Ori community that Ori looks like Stitch, but come on, man. Both Ori games are on Game Pass along with Sea of Thieves, and the Sea of Thieves wiki has a whole page dedicated to the set that informs you what it's based on. Overall, though, it's really difficult to find a legitimate Ori fan who actually uses this set, at least from my experience. Ever since Sea of Thieves had the free 2023 edition upgrade that came with some parts of the set, nearly all the people who I see using this are new players, specifically the sales only. Other than that, I don't have much to say about it. It's a good set. I've encountered a few decent players with this set, but they're very few and far between. These guys are usually a sloop, but galleons are the ones I see most often with just the sails. The Ghost set is the classic tryhard set. I've had more than my fair share of long and hard battles with guys like this back in the day. Unfortunately, ghost ships were also some of the most toxic crews I've encountered, so I've had my fair share of unpleasant exchanges and slurs thrown at me by these ships. They're a fraction of what they used to be though, and I hardly ever see anyone using this set for hunting down players. The most I've seen it used nowadays is an hourglass because people want to look the part of a true Athena ship. Back before the sails got nerfed, this set was a seriously dark omen. If you see a sloop coming for you that's default except for DA sails, your loot was essentially forfeit, and the full set was a sight that would make you an experienced players tremble in their boots. Default with DA was the de facto ship combination for sea hobos everywhere. Now that the sails got nerfed, they aren't used nearly as much anymore outside of the actual set. It's basically the really expensive set that only the elite pirates have. Most people that have the full set got it on an alliance server though, and didn't actually fight to earn the cash to purchase the whole thing, so they aren't very good. At all. They also were the second most toxic set behind the ghost set in their prime, from my experience. Basically all these guys are new players. Enough said. They use this because it's the only set they have, and the sailor set descriptions literally encourage you to get better cosmetics. These guys may seem soft and easy, because pirate better than merchant lol, but these guys are some of the toughest players I've encountered. They're all paranoid of all ships, no matter how big, because they've been bullied to hell. If you leave them alone, they leave you alone, but prepare for a fight if you come within a map square of these guys. Do not underestimate them, or they will sink you. This ship set doesn't exist because nobody does order voyages once they've become a pirate legend. Don't get me wrong, it's a cool set, but I've been seeing it more since season 11 because order got an update, but still, nobody does order. These guys love gold. Crazy, I know. Ironically enough, they very rarely have the gold curse, if at all. They're usually pretty decent with both cannons and hand-to-hand, -hand, but don't always have the best treasure. It's a bit like a loot box. You're either going to get an entire day's worth of For the Damned stacking, or a castaway's chest, or something in between. They almost always never have the gold hoarder figurehead from the Tall Tales, and they never fly the Tribute Peak flag. Because, I mean, look at it. It's disgusting. How many times do we content creators have to say this before you tryhards get this through your thick skulls? Leave this guy alone! He's just fishing! There's no loot for you to take! At most, half the fish aren't even cooked, so you're just giving yourself a chore if you sink these guys and actually want to steal the fish. You're not even getting the best fish either because these guys will just empty their inventory, pocket the best fish, and sink so you don't get it. These ships are almost always sloops and are usually parked outside of a sea fort so they can cook the fish faster. Keep in mind that like the Sailor and Duke ships, some evil people use this set to trick people into fights they can't win. You can tell a fishing boat is a fishing boat if their cannons are raised and they have the alliance flag up. If they are an emissary up, they, they forfeit their rights to live. Despite being a PvP faction, most people using this set are cowards who run from fights more often than starting them. Some people flying the Emissary might get salty if you sink them because I just wanted to level the faction. Mm. It's a PvP faction. Fight for your loot or lose it. This ship falls into two categories. Do they not have the wheel? New players. Do they have it? Tall tail grinders. These guys are usually pretty chill either way, so if you're chill, they'll leave you alone. I shall direct you to the video. 
like everyone else. Captain! Yeah, yeah? Oh, yeah! No, 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 no! Enough said. Unfortunately, 90% of the people I see who use this set aren't actually party boats. They fall more into the Inky Kraken slash Ash and Tryhard category, except these guys are just better at PvP overall. If you see a party boat, don't think of it as an easy kill. Unlike the actual party boat, these guys are actually chill. However, I rarely see this ship anymore. I encountered two of them when I was just a swabby and they were really cool. Since then though, they're not anywhere to be found. Really sad, honestly. These guys are like the inky krakens with a higher opinion of themselves. They're just as hostile, perhaps a bit toxic, and are world event vultures. They will chase you to the ends of the earth even if you haven't picked up any of the loot from the event you just completed. Which is really weird, but it is a fun way to waste their time. And that'll about do it. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, I greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead down there and hit a like and subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching.